Tonight on Q2, the focus turns south. Big horn story, Sheridan, Powder Horn have really seen the movement of the fire along the face of the mountains. With more containment on the northeast side of the Elk Fire, flames are now moving to the other side of Sheridan County. Plus, another Billings boy hit in the heights. You never really think like one of your biggest fears are gonna come through, especially about your kids. The 12 year old hit by a car on his way home. His family thankful for the quick thinking of onlookers and hopeful it solves a problem. That's one mother's worst nightmare. Here's another. She said, Mom, I really messed up. Please help me. And then a man came on the phone and said, I have your daughter. Told her daughter is in imminent danger. She sends money, but then gets a phone call from her perfectly safe daughter. Wait until you hear the whole story. The MTN 10 o'clock news on Q2 starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this Wednesday night. I'm Casey Conlon. We're into night 12 of the Elk Fire as firefighters continue to make progress on the blaze burning in Sheridan County, Wyoming. It grew around 1,000 acres overnight last night, bringing the total footprint to about 76,000. Crews have been able to construct more fire lines. The blaze now 16% contained, almost entirely along the northeast side. Many remain on evacuation notice. Nearly 900 personnel continued to battle the fire. Many of those are now being shifted to the south. Winds have been pushing the fire that way, and many living on those edges have questions. It's prompted the latest community meeting in Bighorn tonight. That's where we find our David J. A few miles from the town of Bighorn, which is southwest of Sheridan and southeast of the fire, much of the concern up until this point has been up north near Parkman and Dayton, but with the fire growing, people in this area have now had to be on alert. First and foremost, all you know, human lives and all of your property, our property, our backyard, and our drinking water. Those are critical for all of us. The incident commander updates the Elk Fire at the Bighorn High School gym. The biggest priority for the incident management team is looking at how do we minimize impacts into the Big Goose watershed and the Big Goose water treatment facility? And in Bighorn, a short distance from Sheridan, it's fairly normal on the football field for the high school team and for the younger kids playing football as well. I think they've kind of been monitoring air quality. It was spreading really fast a few days ago, but um, it slowed down a lot, and so we're not as worried now. And that's the sentiment for others in Bighorn. That fire's got a long way to go before it starts putting things in jeopardy. I mean, air quality, as you see, is pretty horrible, but we all have to deal with this and let this thing work itself out. And while residents feel relatively comfortable, they also know the potential dangers, and one woman is selling signs to raise money for firefighters. What inspired you and motivated you to do this? Um, I've lived out here for over 20 years, and I love this community and this town. And in times like this, it's amazing how um, people rally together to help. The firefighters appreciate the citizen support, and crews were out protecting structures, including the Big Goose Water Treatment Plant. If the watershed above it um, burns very severely or hot, um, that can generate enough sediment to shut down or impact that water treatment plant. So. The team is busy thinking about ways to not let that happen and obviously protecting the, the treatment plan itself. So that's that's been a big success there. The story area is moved into a set, set status in the story area. We will use the IPOS alert and there'll be lots of law enforcement presence in the area to answer questions. It's a combination of the wind and the topography that is moving this fire down the front of the mountains. In Bighorn, David J, MTN News. It's again for Wyoming and Montana. The biggest weather story is obviously the haze and smoke. We still have a lot more on the Sheridan area and now the sun has set. A lot of that smoke is settling down toward the ground. So the air quality has gotten worse the last couple hours around Sheridan, but many areas in the moderate category, including Broadus, Miles City, Billings, all the way to Lewistown and closer to Glendive too. Now we're still expecting more of that smoke around the Sheridan area specifically, also over southwestern Montana, but with a cold front moving our direction, Direction. Much of eastern Montana will see less haze and smoke through the course of the day tomorrow. We also have other changes in the weather. Details about that, as well as devastating Hurricane Milton, which is currently over Florida. Details about that and your complete seven-day forecast coming up. 
The weather concerns much larger down south. Millions of people bracing for impact tonight as Hurricane Milton makes landfall in Florida. Parts of the Gulf Coast could see a storm surge of up to 12 feet when all is said and done, with officials warning everyone that this is a life or death situation. Christian Benavides reports from Tampa. Hurricane Milton made landfall on Florida's Gulf Coast Wednesday after officials and residents took precautions ahead of the potentially deadly storm. In Sarasota, ambulances lined up, ready to evacuate nursing homes. Milton still carries incredible destructiveness can wipe out communities. In an address to the nation, President Biden said the federal government will work with Florida officials to help 45. pump flood water, restore power, and clear debris that can turn into deadly projectiles during heavy winds. I encourage people to look for safer shelter. Sometimes moving just a few miles can mean the difference between life and death. The Tampa area has not had a hurricane this powerful in more than a century. Officials are concerned for the potential of deadly storm surge and those hurricane force winds. It's moving toward the northeast at 17 mile per hour and it will continue to move across central Florida throughout the night and into the early morning hours. As Milton approached, mandatory evacuation orders and warnings were issued to millions. We had to convince folks to get out of high rises and uh, that even if they were seven stories up or more, then they were still at risk. I've never been like this close to like a big hurt. We're just gonna keep sheltered up in our hotel room. I mean, we brought books, we brought card games and stuff. Several major theme parks ceased operations and Orlando's airport closed ahead of Milton's landfall. Christian Benavides, CBS News, Tampa. Almost a year since 24-year-old Brendan McMahon was killed in a West Billings apartment, 30-year-old Tad Warren pled not guilty this morning to killing his former friend. McMahon's body was found at the Fox Meadows apartment complex on Monad Road on November 9th, 2023. In court documents, prosecutors allege McMahon and Warren were once friends, but then had been dating the same woman. While the woman was away, Warren allegedly shot McMahon in her apartment. Warren was eventually arrested two weeks ago in Fresno, California. He's being held on a $500,000 bond. A 12-year-old Billings boy has a long road to recovery ahead after being hit by a car yesterday afternoon in the Billings Heights. His injuries are serious, among them a broken leg and fractured pelvis. The boy's family thankful that he's just alive, thanks to a number of good Samaritans. Charlie Kleps has more. It was right here at the intersection of Hilltop Road and Main Street in the Billings Heights, where 12-year-old Dresden Kurtz was struck by a vehicle on his walk home from school Tuesday afternoon. Doctors say he should be able to make a full recovery, but for his mother, it was a scary circumstance, and she's hoping that it'll lead to change. Sheer panic. It was terrifying. The fear was endless. Absolute worst nightmare. As Jackie Wilson received a phone call Tuesday afternoon with her worst nightmare coming true. When I picked up, I heard sirens and just cop cars, and I'm like, hello. And then he goes, Mom, I got ran over. That call from Wilson's 12 year old son had her fearing the worst. My first thought was just, am I going to lose my kid? Like, what? How bad are we talking? Her son, Dresden Kurtz, was crossing the street at Hilltop and Main on his way home from school. While in the crosswalk, he was struck by a vehicle turning right onto Main. The driver, a 27-year-old woman, was cited with careless driving, which can come with up to six months in jail if serious injury is caused. Kurtz was immediately transported to the Billings Clinic, where he's dealing with a broken leg, broken ribs, and a fractured pelvis. We're going to get through it. It's going to be kind of a long healing process, but... He's still here to do that, so very grateful. Wilson is doing her best to stay positive, though she does believe the situation could have been prevented. I think we should all have a reasonable expectation that our kids are going to be taken safely to school and brought home safely from school. Billings Public Schools only puts bus stops near homes outside of three miles from a student's school because the district says they don't currently have enough funding for more. Wilson says they live about 2.6 miles from Medicine Crow and that she can't take Dresden to school herself. That's why he was getting off of a city bus just before he was was struck. I'm going to do everything I can in my power to change it for kids in the future, for kids now. One thing is for sure, after nearly losing her son, she's grateful for all that helped on scene. You were there for my baby when I couldn't be, and like, it was just really nice to know that your kids are taken care of. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Bozeman city leaders are cracking down on urban camping, voting to pass a law Tuesday night that may outlaw it entirely near the end of next year. 
Ordinance 2172 would implement a permit and fee system and give the Bozeman city manager the ability to move urban campers wherever he sees fit. The permits would be good for 30 days and none will be granted after October 1st, 2025. At last night's Bozeman City Commission meeting, city staff painted a picture of a serious problem. Since August, there have been nearly 1,100 calls for service related to urban camping, with 100 of those resulting in a misdemeanor or felony offense. The city also released results from the survey saying that nearly 87% of residents believe urban camping should not be allowed. The new ordinance would restrict camping on city streets with fines up to $500. Heather Fox was one of dozens who gave emotional testimony against the law, but in the end, city leaders say action has to be taken. Not bad people, most of us do good. The current rules and authorities we have in Ordinance 2147 are effective in dealing with a certain group of voting The fees could range up to $25 per permit. These new laws take effect in mid-November. Still ahead on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2, another Billings mom gets a call about her child in trouble, but this one ends very differently. You won't quite believe it, and that's the point. Later, one local woman crediting her survival story on two other special survivors. We'll hear the story of three friends and the battle they not only shared, but beat together.